Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May the peace, mercy, and blessings of Allah be upon all of you. A'uzu billahi s-sami'il alim min ash-shaytan wa-jim min hamzihi wa nafthihi wa nafthih bismillahi r-Rahman r-Rahim I seek the refuge of Allah from Satan, the rejected, from his incitement, from his blowing and his spittle. In the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful. Alhamdulillah. Wassalatu wassalamu ala rasulillah wa ala ahli wa sahbi ajma'in. All thanks belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the curer, protector, provider, sustainer, Lord of one and all. Complete blessings and salutations upon our beloved messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his entire household, his companions, and those who follow in their footsteps till the end of time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Al-Dhariyat, Quran chapter 51 verse 55, وَذَكِّرْ فَإِنَّ الذِّكْرَ تَنْفَرُ الْمُعْمِنِينَ He's telling his beloved messenger Muhammad sallallahu to remind because reminding prophets the believers to welcome to another segment of this series. Today we'll continue from where we stopped. The last time we talked about the virtues of Sha'aban which is the month we are in now. We are just a couple of days, about uh, 19 or 18 days to Ramadan 144 Hijri. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us alive to reach Ramadan of this year. And may we be among those who will be forgiven. May we be among those who will witness later to Qadr. And may we be among those who will be emancipated from the hellfire and be written amongst the people of paradise. Jannatul Firdaus al-A'la. Amin. In the last segment, just as I mentioned earlier, we talked about some of the virtues of uh, Sha'ban. So now we are going to continue from where we stopped. There's a hadith narrated by Usama bin Zaid, which was recorded, collected by in Sunan al Tirmizi. Uh, Usama bin Zaid is the son of Zaid ibn Haritha. Zaid ibn Haritha is the freed slave, which is the freed slave, freed slave of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Who's is uh, Zaid ibn Haritha ibn Sharahil al Kalbi was the only companion who was mentioned by name in the Quran. فَلَمَّا قَدَا زَيْدٌ مِنْهَا وَطَلًا زَوَّجْنَاكَهَا This is in Surah Al-Ahzab, Quran chapter 33, verse 37. So Usama Zaid is called with the nickname Al-Hibbu ibn Al-Hubbi. What does that mean? Al-Hibbu, the beloved of the Prophet, and the son of the beloved of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Because his father too was loved by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So uh, one a highlight of uh, Usama ibn Zaid is that uh, there was once this hadith was narrated by Aisha radiallahu anha, which is uh, collected by Imam Bukhari, Imam Muslim. Uh, it's also mentioned in uh, Sunan Darimi, Sunan al Tirmizi. In Sunan Darimi, hadith number 2200, collected in Sayyid Bukhari, hadith number 3216, and then in Sayyid Muslim, hadith number 3196. There was a time when Quraysh came to a woman, actually, a woman from the Mahzumi clan stone and you know that if all the conditions are met the hand is supposed to be cut off so they, they said who is going to intercede on behalf of this woman for the prophet sallallahu then they remembered and said it's only the beloved of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam usama bin Zaid. then they told him to please go and intercede on behalf of this lady so when he went he tried to tell the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to please intercede yeah, in the, he went to intercede for the lady and the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said what a standard set by the Prophet. He said that, you know, actually, uh, the Prophet, when Usama bin Zayd came to the Prophet, he said that uh, he wants to intercede that they should forgive the lady. Immediately, the Prophet stood up and then he said, Oh, people, he said that, do you know, he said, Are you trying to intercede? for something which is a legal punishment by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then he said the people that came before you are destroyed because whenever the children of the nobles stole they will let them loose but whenever the children of the weak and the downtrodden stole they will uh, implement the capital or maximum punishment then he said by Allah 
لو أن فاطمة بنت محمد سرقت لقطعت يدها. he said by Allah even if Fatima the daughter of Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم were to steal he said I'm going to cut off her hand. سبحان الله. this is the standard said by the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. but this thing is still repeating in our lives now. if these children of the noble or if the rich steal public treasury they allow them go after returning some few uh, millions or billions. But if the children or the, the weak or downtrodden still, they implement the capital punishment uh, to them, by the way. So, uh, this hadith was narrated by Osama bin Zayd. And he saw the Prophet Sallallahu fasting a lot in Sha'ban. Then he asked the Prophet Sallallahu he said, why does he fast a lot or regularly in this month of Sha'ban, the month we are in now? And the Prophet Sallallahu said, this is the month that people are, do not pay attention to, meaning the people are negligent. Uh, in performing some acts of worship and he said it's between Rajab and Ramadan uh, and he said uh, deeds are raised up to Allah so good deeds are raised up to Allah during this month and he said I want that my deeds should be raised to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while I'm in a state of fasting subhanallah so this uh, was collected in Sunan Nisai so we should ensure that we fast a lot in this month if you know you have not fasted since from the beginning of Shaban today we are in the 11th of Shaban is an opportunity for you. In fact, Ayam will be the coming. That is the 13th, 14th, and 15th. So if you are in a place like Nigeria, uh, Ayam will be, that is the 13th, will start on Monday. But if you are in places like Saudi, uh, Qatar, Palestine, Turkey, uh, Libya, Iraq, uh, all these places, uh, Ayam will be the 13th, will start tomorrow. Because they are, it's 12 today already for them. So, us, they are here in Nigeria on the 13th is Ayamul Bid. Or if you are singling out Monday to fast, that is Yomul Abiyat. Uh, that's the white days when the moon is bright. That is the 13th, 14th, and 15th. As narrated to us in a hadith by Abu Huraira, the Prophet ﷺ told him to be fasting three days at least of every month. So, if you fast three days of a month, it will be written as though you fasted the whole month. Because of the advance and the surah, this surah, uh, Surah Al-An'am, that uh, man ja'a bil hasanati, actually verse 160, man ja'a Quran chapter 6 verse 160, man ja'a bil hasanati, falahu ashu amthalia, anyone who does a good deed to be multiplied for him by 10. So ensure that you fast, if you have not fasted in Sha'aban before, try to make use of this uh, white days and fast at least these three days. If you know you can't fast three days, at least fast on a Monday and the Thursday that is coming. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us to fast. And then also, there's a hadith narrated. So when are we supposed to stop fasting in Shaban? It is recommended that uh, when we reach halfway of Shaban, we should put an end to it. Except if a person, or if you are fasting regularly, there's no harm you can do so. Because there's a hadith narrated by Abu Huraira, radiallahu anhu, anhu, radiallahu anhu, may Allah be pleased with him, which is uh, collected in Sahihain. Sahihain, what we say, Muttafaqun Alay, that is Bukhari and Muslim. In Sahih Bukhari, is hadith number 1983. In Sahih Muslim, is hadith number 1082. Uh, the Prophet said, Do not preempt Ramadan by uh, fasting a day or two days uh, before the Ramadan, except if a person who is fasting regularly, that is, you have a certain sunnah you are following, maybe fasting Mondays or Thursdays. If it falls a day or two to Ramadan, there's no problem. If, for example, Ramadan is starting on uh, Thursday, or oh, and then you decided you, you are fasting, uh, maybe Ramadan uh, was to fall on Friday, and then you normally fast Mondays, Thursday, there's no problem. If, for example, you are fasting the fast of Prophet Dawood, that is Kani Yasumi Yoman, or Iftar Yoman, that is fast today, and then he breaks the next day, and then the upper day again he fasts, he breaks the next day, then if it falls on a day before or two days before Ramadan, there's no problem. Hope, you're, hope you are getting the point. Uh, then it is also recommended that why do we normally put a break? That the Prophet ﷺ recommended us to put some few days gap between the fasting in the month of Shaban and Ramadan. The scholars said that it is for you to have a rest and for you to differentiate between, let the, you have the taste of the difference between the Nawafil uh, or the Sunnah fast and then the Ramadan fast. The one that is obligatory. Also, the scholars said the hikmah behind fasting in the month of Sha'aban is uh, to give you a kind of training, pre-training before the main Ramadan comes in. Because there are some people 
whom after Ramadan they have not fasted any voluntary fast till when Ramadan is coming again. And then also in Shaban, the hadith narrated to us by Aisha that she herself, she said that she, does, she used to make up her missed fast in the month of Ramadan, which is due to menses when she misses her fast, that she makes it up in the month of Shaban. Why? Because she said that she's engaged in serving the Prophet Sallallahu so she couldn't get the chance, she couldn't get the fursa. So I'm urging to our sisters, our mothers, who have missed some fast in Ramadan last year to ensure that they make it up because this is the last chance. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us to reap the full uh, benefits of this month. And then also, the last hadith we are going to wrap it up with, wrap this session with, is a hadith narrated by Ma'akil ibn Yasar, which is uh, uh, mentioned in Sayyid Muslim, hadith number 2984, that the Prophet Sallallahu said, worship or worship in the times of tribulation or fitna is like hijra to me. The scholars said, subhanallah, the scholars said that worship in a time when people do not engage in a certain act of worship, like mostly people are negligent. That's what the Prophet Sallallahu tells us in the hadith of Usama bin Zaid that people are negligent, negligent, do not pay attention to this month. And he said he prefers to be fasting because our deeds are raised up to him. And he prefers that when his deeds are raised up, it will be, it, he, he will be in a state of fasting. So doing acts of certain acts of worship when people are not doing it is not easy. It's actually very difficult. But for example, in Ramadan, when everybody is fasting, the fasting becomes easy. So the scholars are interpreted like just for example, a time will come when the Prophet said, al 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 min said that the perfect person who is holding steadfast to his religion is like a person who is holding to a call of fire. SubhanAllah, we are already in those times when a person is trying to uh, do certain acts of worship or trying to uh, follow the sunnah when for example you raise the trouser or you lift some bed they tell look at this person they tell you look at him they said that he's a new stars and all those things or when you are using the siwak often they say that when did this guy become an ustas but if for example it's fashion people try to tend to raise their trousers like when uh, this poor king of pop this musician used to raise his trousers people used to follow it and raise their trousers but when it's a sunnah when they knew that it's sunnah of the prophet they refrain they refrain from uh uh, raising their legs, subhanallah. So may Allah make us among those whom immediately we hear something authentic from the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We say, we follow. Uh -huh. May Allah subhanahu wa taala make it easy for us to follow the Sunnah, and may Allah subhanahu wa taala uh, bless us, forgive our sins. May Allah subhanahu wa taala keep us alive to reach the Ramadan of this year. May He forgive uh, our departed parents and all the Muslimin. With this, I think we are going to pause here till next time. Remember, blessed. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka na bina Muhammad subhanallah wa bihamdi subhanaka Allahumma bihamdi kinashadu Allah ila illa ant nastaghfiruka na tubi lika. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.